Good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are coming to you from Hillside United Methodist Church here in Phoenix City, Alabama, also known as the Ladonia area on Highway 80. And we welcome you to come and worship with us here in the sanctuary. If you are if you have the time and, and you're close by, we have a, a pew ready for you. And we just um, thank God that whether you're watching on Facebook Live or WeChat or YouTube or if you're part of our church family here, we thank God that today is another day God has made. And we're excited to share this message with you today. We've already been praying for you and we ask you to continue your prayers for us. We thank God for your prayers, and we thank God for our church family here in Phoenix City, Ladonia, Crawford, uh, Columbus, Georgia, Alabama, Georgia, the United States, Canada, Mexico, Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, the United Kingdom, Mongolia, Korea, Japan, China, uh, Mexico, wherever you are and whatever time you're watching us today, we thank God for this opportunity to share the good news with you. We thank God for your prayers, and we thank God for all your generous financial support. So many of you have been so gracious to give to this ministry, and that blesses us, and it honors God, and we are just so thankful that you recognize that we are doing God's work here in our own way here at Hillside, and we thank God for that giving. We're going to ask Mr. Edwards now to come and uh, ask God to bless this giving today. Bless and multiply back to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother Pastor. Uh, I just want to continue to thank you for your generous giving. And I'd like to just thank especially from our international ministry, the, our Chinese members, how they continue to support this ministry because they see the impact in their lives. Almighty and gracious God, we come before you this hour to offer you our tithes, knowing that the windows of heaven is going to open and shower down upon us. So we're doing what you said. And that's what you said in your Bible, Lord. So we just want to take this moment to give you the glory to Christ Jesus, the true and living God, forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Edwards, and thank you again, all of you. We say God bless you. Yesu Ani. We're so honored to be uh, with you today. Our scripture this morning is the uh, chapter 91 in the book of Psalms. Psalm 91. The Lord put it on my heart that now more than ever we need to take these words to heart. We need to embrace them. We need to claim them. And we need to walk in this truth from the Word of God. Psalm 91, the protection of the Most High. Hear this, the Word of the Lord. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say concerning the Lord, who is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, he himself will rescue you from the bird trap, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with his feathers. You will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow that flies by day, the plague that stalks in darkness, or the pestilence that ravages at noon. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, the pestilence will not reach you. You will only see with your eyes and witness the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord my refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place, no harm will come to you. No plague will come near your tent. For he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent. Because he has set his heart on me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word this morning. Let's pray as we open our hearts to God's word. Heavenly Father, I thank you that the entrance of your word brings light to us today. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive this word. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. And let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Another translation says, God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when we need Him. My question to you today is, where is your place of safety? You know, I, I grew up, uh, like many of you, during the Cold War, and there was a lot of awareness of um, uh, the possibility of uh, nuclear bombs raining all over the world, you know, and, um, and, and people talked about bomb shelters. I was always fascinated and I always wanted a house with a, a basement. We had a ba house with a basement in Maine, but, you know, it's just like, where's that safe place to hide? Where do you go? Or, or during a tornado, of course... You know, my, one of my childhood favorite movies was The Wizard of Oz, and I can still see that giant tornado coming down the road, chasing after Dorothy and her family going into the uh, root cellar. And every time I'm thinking, please, Lord, let Dorothy get into the root cellar on time this time, right? And it never happened, but she survived. But, you know, you know there's a, a secret place we think about, you know, like this is base or this is the safe place. This is where you're protected. And, you know, the, the sad story is, that there came a time way back in the beginning of the Bible when the door to the ark was shut and it was too late for most. Our scripture says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The word dwell means to live as a resident, always safe, always there. See, God gives us free will. We choose where we dwell, where we abide. We choose where we set our attention, where we place our hearts. Psalm 91 describes for us the blessing of dwelling in the secret place. So where is this place that we call the secret place? There is a place in God where the child of God can dwell. That honestly most Christianity doesn't know exists or either they're unwilling to pay the price to be there. The secret place of God is not made by human hands. No power of man, no ability by his own hands can create this place. It's not a bomb shelter. It's not a root cellar. It's not underneath the kitchen table, is it? Zechariah 4, 6 says, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. The secret place is where we dwell, and it is built only by the Spirit of God. The secret place is a, a place of ultimate trust and faith in God, where hope is alive and well, some people desperately need more hope in their lives today as they watch TV or listen to the news and hear these things that discourage them, that break their hearts or, or frighten them. See, the, the place where doubts cannot dwell, this secret place where fear is not present and where confidence and the power of God to deliver is ever present. It is a place of faith so strong that nothing the enemy can throw at against us can unsettle us or bring fear to our hearts. My brothers and sisters, it is time for us to dwell in the secret place now more than ever. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Another translation says, He surrounds me with a fortress of protection so nothing should cause me alarm. You know, there was a story about a man who, who uh, visited a new multi-layered uh, shopping center, a department store with many story, stories of um, different departments and everything. And the, he got there that day. He decided he wanted to be there for the grand opening. There was a huge crowd outside, and he was part of the line to get into this new shopping center. And, and he had to walk in lockstep with this crowd, and there was barely even room to move. But he looked around. He said, I just want to look at something. I don't want to just see this crowd of people. I want to shop for something. And finally, he looked out, and he could see it table after table of shoes. So he said, well, you know, I need some new shoes. I think I'll go over there and, and look at the shoes. So he finally squeezed his way through the crowd and got there. And as he looked at the shoes, he noticed that many of them were kind of scuffed up. Some of them worn out. Some of the soles were uneven. Some of them even had holes in the soles. And he just got, something's wrong here. They're not even packaged well. So finally, he just had seen enough. And he went to the customer service desk and he said, what is the deal here with these shoes? They all look old. They're not in good shape. I came here for a nice new pair of shoes. And the customer service man said, Sir, the area you're in is for the used second-hand shoes. If you want a new pair of shoes, you've got to take the escalator 
go to a higher level. So you and I, if we're trying to be where God wants us to be in 2021, but we're still trying to put on the old shoes of the past, we're never going to find the right fit. That's why Jesus said you can't put new wine in old wineskins. See, the secret place is a place where we know that God has everything under control. We're so convinced of it in our hearts that there's no worry, no concern, and no fretting over our circumstances or trouble. We have a calm assurance that everything is well, all is well, even during a storm. We have that peace. Our heart knows, our spirit is strong, and our mind is made up through those words that we hear from Romans 8.28 that says, We know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. We know that that truth is a fact and it is irrevocable. In the second verse of Psalm 91, it proclaims, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So I want to ask you today, who do you say, who do you declare that the Lord is for you? You know, I hear people, when there's a bad situation or an untimely death or a natural disaster or some, some earth-shaking disaster happens, and what do they say? Why did God let this happen? Or how could God let this happen? They blame God for everything imaginable, but then when things are blessed, when things are going right, do they give God the credit? Or do they say, look what I did, right? We give God the blame, but we take the credit for ourselves. But Psalm 89 one says, I will sing of the Lord's great favor forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. We sing that song, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. So many times people will only work God into a chapter of their lives when disaster strikes. But the word of God tells us that he is here to watch over us, to protect us. Now, on a daily basis, in this critical time in history, and anyone who is, has their eyes open knows that we're living in times unparalleled in our history, have you noticed that what the experts are telling you seems to change every other week? If you go back over the last 18 months, you're going to hear a lot of things, a lot of answers, and a lot of things that seem to change, and no guarantee, but it adjusts and changes to fit the narrative the plans. Psalm 91, 2 and 3 in the New Living says, This I will declare of the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. See, so we can't trust in man. We trust in God. We put our trust in Him. He is there to we, for us to rely on. He says, He is my God. I will trust in Him, the Scripture says, for He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Where is your faith today? Where is my faith? Who are we trusting in? Where are we placing our belief? The scripture says he will rescue you from every trap. See, there are traps set for us. I heard something last week about someone, a, a family friend whose son was um, addicted to heroin. And it's like that thing that seems so foreign to me. And yet it's like it happens. You know, it's like, how could this happen? But there was a trap set and they fell into the trap. You know, I don't think any crack addict set out to say, I want to become a crack addict, you know? These things happen. People fall into traps. But God says he will rescue you from every trap and he will protect you from deadly disease. Are we going to listen to the world or are we going to listen to the word? I'll ask you one more time. <laughs> Answer for yourself. Amen. Are you listening to what's on channel so-and-so and they're telling you what to be afraid of this week? Or are you going to listen and trust in the word of God? I am preaching today. Yes, I am. But the thing is, whose report, as the script says, whose report will you believe? Do you believe the word of God is true? Jesus said, according to your faith, it is done unto you. Listen, for us to dwell, to abide, we have to believe and appropriate God's promises. We have to hear and believe and receive not only for ourselves, but for our families. If you're the leader of your household, you have a responsibility to pray over your whole family too. The Bible teaches us that we inherit the promises of God by faith. Galatians 3.26 says, You are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. Let me read that again. You are all 
God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. And just three verses down it says, if you belong to Christ, which we know we belong to Christ through faith and what he did for us, it says, then you are Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. That means we inherit the promises of God through faith. We inherit what we talk about as the new covenant, all the protection, all the blessings, all the provision, all the healing and salvation that come through Jesus' perfect, complete sacrifice. The scripture says, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up in their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. That's the word of God, amen? I dare not challenge the word of God. I have to submit myself and bow to the word of God. But how do we make the Lord our refuge? The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do you believe that this is who God is for you today? The Lord says at the end of Psalm 91, he says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. And listen again to this last part. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. The Hebrew word there for salvation is Yeshua. Salvation through Jesus Christ. So if you listen to the promises of God, isn't that what you want? Isn't this what we need? Are we abiding Today, See, we're, we're supposed to dwell. We're supposed to abide. Psalm 91 is like some magic formula where you just say it ten times and everything's good. Psalm 91 is talking about dwelling, abiding. It's about relationship with God. It's about an investment of our hearts, our trust, our love. Jesus said, abide in me and I will abide in you. A branch cannot bear fruit if it is disconnected from the vine. And neither will you if you are not connected to me. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me and I in you, you will bear great fruit. Without me, you will accomplish nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is like a branch that is tossed out and shrivels up and is later gathered to be tossed into the fire to burn. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my voice abides in you, anything you ask will come to pass for you. Your abundant growth and faithfulness as my followers will then bring glory to your Father. See, as we're blessed, we give glory to God. And those around us see that. This is all about the love of God for us. It's about our new covenant through Jesus Christ. We are living in perilous and unpredictable times. Where is your trust? Where is your hope? Do you look to the world or do you look to the word? It's time to get on board, to stay on board. It's time for us to dwell. Colossians 1.23 warns us, you need to remain well established and rooted in faith and not shift away from the hope given in the good news that you heard. Today you've heard good news. It says, don't venture away from what you have heard and taken to heart. The living hope of the good news. There's a song we sing with a chorus that goes, Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you. He will save you now. We must dwell in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You that the entrance of Your Word brings light to us today. We thank you, Lord, that we can dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We can find refuge in, in you, Lord God, as we abide in you and your words abide in us. And now, Lord, as we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, help us, Lord, to remember 
this new covenant sealed by your blood, Lord Jesus. Help us to remember what you have already done for us and that we can rest in you, trust in you, and hope in you. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we invite you to join us for Holy Communion as we do every Sunday. We encourage you to find some bread or a cracker and some juice if possible and come with us as we honor the sacrifice that Jesus paid for us. The Word of God tells us on the night Jesus was betrayed, He took bread and He broke it. Say, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. In the same way Jesus took the cup. Saying, this cup is the new covenant. Sealed by the shedding of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as you drink it. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. For as often as you do eat this bread. Drink this cup. You can show forth the Lord's death until He comes again. Let me close by going back to that Psalm 91 and reading you those last precious words. God says, When He calls out to me, I will answer Him. I will be with Him in trouble. I will rescue Him and give Him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you, lift his countenance upon you, and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a victorious new week. Thank you for being with us today. Amen.